Hello everybody and welcome to episode 44. Today we're going to be adding a new tile set and making a new room. We're going to make the cave room, which is where the player is going to go to actually recover the hat uh, that the, uh, the the whole whole game revolves around. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come into our river and I'm actually going to get rid of the hat on this layer just so I don't forget. Um, because you know we want our hat to be in the cave, not just randomly in the river in the next room. That's just where it was for testing. Next, we're going to bring in a new sprite sheet that's going to be our cave tile. So I'm going to right click in sprites, create sprite from images. And in my assets, it's going to be S tiles cave, okay? Uh, this one specifically. And we're going to name it exactly that, okay? Lowercase s tiles cave. All right, I'm just going to take a moment to talk about this tile set because it's a little weird looking if you're not used to seeing this sort of thing. Like, Ooh, there's a lot of different tiles. That must be a nightmare to actually place. In the game, right, you've got to find the exact uh, wall types and whatever you're going to need for lots of different shapes. And yes, if you were to place them manually, this would be a pain. Uh, other tile sets kind of revolved around like 16 tiles, um, like per thing, which was quite easy to just sort of go in and hand place because you can kind of see which ones you want at any point in time. But the number of shapes and stuff you can make with this is a little bit limited. This is more complicated and allows us to create nice, fancy, like shapes of wall and so on. Um, with like any number of corners and that type of thing. Oh, and there is one actual change I need to make. I'll, I'll explain it first more. <laughs> there's, there's a fix I need to make, which uh, I have to make in the video because some of you will have already downloaded the assets pack, you know, 40 episodes ago. <laughs> so I do need to show those of you, I'll, I'll try and remember to update it as well, um, and, and the link in the description, but like, uh, yeah, there's a little mistake I made in here, but it's fine. Um, where was I? Yeah, this, uh, how you use a tile set like this is there's functionality built into GameMaker um, to create auto-tiling. Uh, so that whenever you place a tile, it just automatically works out which of these tiles it should be to just consider that space occupied, all right? Based on whatever um, tiles around it are filled in. So then we can kind of easily draw and create um, a, a tiled map. All right, uh, to, in order to do that, I'm going to right click in tile sets. I'm going to make a new tile set called T Tiles Cave. I'm going to assign the sprite to be um, that sprite we just made, S Tiles Cave. All right, um, and you'll see it's automatically like just as with um, at, uh, T tiles here, as I split it into 32 by 32 tiles. You notice the top one is blank. I'm sure I've been over this before, but tile sets, you, you always have to leave the top left tile blank. Um, in the original sprite, um, well, actually, you don't have to in the original sprite, but if you, it doesn't matter if you put anything there because uh, it'll become blank. Like if I just, if I edit this and I go into here and I, I draw something in there, um, I won't actually be able to use that. If I then come to T Tiles Cave, you'll see. Oh, okay, it does still show there, but that's kind of misleading. You'll see there's no white outline around here. I can't use this tile. It doesn't do anything for me. Okay. Um, it's going to reserve that space for, I don't know, something important to Game Maker about tile sets. I don't really understand all the details of it. I just know that this top left tile is never going to be used um, in any way. Okay, so don't don't bother putting a tile there. I think I did have that as the full one, and then I like moved it <laughs> down to here when I remembered. Um, but if I then go to Auto Tiling, uh, we get this little uh, menu up. Um, and if I add, you can add a 16 one as well, but I don't find those as necessary. I find it easy enough to just manually do those. But for uh, what this is, which is a 47 tile tile set, we can add this. And you can see it's brought up a thing here for us to define um, each different type of tile. Now this can be a huge pain if you've done all those tiles in a particular order and you've got to find each one and click each thing and assign each one. You just click on each one and click on a thing and it assigns it, right? And that can be really a huge pain to do if um, you've done it in a in an order that doesn't match exactly this, but that's what I've done. I've, I've created I've created this tile set matching this exactly. Uh, feel free to use it as a template um, for doing your own tile sets. I really recommend it if you're doing game maker stuff. Just make it so you match uh, uh, the layout of the tile set to the layout in here. Uh, don't worry about this stuff. This is extra stuff for when we're doing some pits and things. Um, this is our main wall stuff up here, okay? Now, the, <laughs> the little error I made that I uh, meant to, uh, and I need to fix. You see this top right one um, here is like showing a tile with like three corners, whereas in my tile set, um, 
that top right one is uh, four corners, exactly the same as this one underneath. So I just need to go into the original sprite and actually get rid um, of that. It's up here, isn't it? Um, we will get rid of that just because it looks dumb. And <laughs> come up to here. Um, this can be a little hard to see, so you can always use the little toggle grid feature in the image editor here and even change the color of it just to make it nice and easy to see. Um, just so I can see exactly what I'm doing. I'm just going to get rid of this bottom left corner in this tile. Just grab this color as well and then just like use the brush tool. Just fill that in. <laughs> really simple, right? Um, yeah, I'll try and make sure I edit the zip file so you can download it fresh, but I imagine most of you have downloaded it already. Um, it takes you two seconds to make that change, all right? It's just, you'll just have to fix that. Okay, so once you've made that fix back in the auto tiling window of the tile set, um, once you've actually uh, built your tile set and brought it in as a tile set, got this little tiling window up. Very, very easy to set this up if you've got it in the right order, because all I have to do now is just sort of click in order. Uh, this top left one, though, is the full one, which is this one here. Um, just because of the way this layout works, I just find it easier, otherwise it would confuse me being... Like, I like it so that when I reach the end of this line, I'm reaching the end of this line here and so on. That's why that full one is down here because, you know, it can't be top left and so on. Whereas this one has a top left. So, yeah. Anyway, so that's the full one. And then we literally just click left to right, top to bottom. So... See, this is why I do it this way because I don't have to think about what I'm doing. I don't have to pair, like, use my eyes and work out, like, which tile is which because it can even be quite confusing, like, oh, which, what's the light gray and what's the dark gray again? It can be a little tricky. Whereas this way I've set it up, so I just click it in order. Um, so now that that's set up, what we can do with that um, is when I, if I, uh, well, <laughs> I'm not going to explain it now. There's no point explaining it now. We'll make the room and then you'll see what it does. It's very magical. You'll enjoy it um, if you've not seen it before. So I'm going to make a new room. I'm going to actually duplicate our river. Um, bring us through to that, uh, and I'm going to rename it our cave. Okay, um, the instances layer. I'm going to well, actually we're going to move the player out of the way, and then I'm going to select everything else and delete it. I'm going to move the player down to somewhere in the bottom left-ish because that's how we're going to do our cave. Um, tiles upper. I'm going to wipe just by. Oh, I've already. I think I did it in a test recorder. We just set a really big brush size of any um, tile and just hold the right mouse button and just drag over here just to get rid of everything. Leave the layer there in case, I don't know, we want to use it for something. And tiles main, um, I'm going to do the same thing, but then I'm also going to change that tile layer to be uh, T tiles cave. All right, and you can see we've got that, that cave layer up. I'm going to go to libraries now, and you see auto tile one. You can also name them as well, but I, <laughs> in my experience, I usually have like one tile set per thing I'm auto tiling anyway, so I tend not to actually name my auto tiles libraries. Maybe I should. Um, I'm pretty bad at that. Um, but for me, it's just called auto tile one. You do whatever you want. And you see, even at size one, if I just click and drag, you can see I actually start to form like the walls of a cave, and it just like automatically works out based on what tile is next to it, uh, what tile each tile should should be, right? Okay, um, I'm now just going to, I'm going to remove that, and I'm just going to draw in um, essentially the cave network that we're going to have, alright? I'll probably just speed this section up. Alright, um, this room actually probably ended up being a lot bigger than we even needed it to be. Um, now you might be thinking, well, the ground is black. Did we make a tile for the ground? Um, I actually didn't. I'm just going to be really quick in this. I'm just going to set the background to be an appropriate color. Um, I actually have that color written down. So if I go to background and I just change the color, um, you can actually input like a hex um, color um, into here if you happen to know the hex code or if you've just written it down from your color picker, which is exactly what I did. And it's in my notes. It is this color. Okay, uh, 916C57. And you type that in and if I just click somewhere, it updates it. It's just this kind of light brown that matched okay with the walls that I'd made. All right. And I'm gonna hit OK. Okay, just a really quick, lazy way to do the background. You could use make a tile set for it if you want. I'm just being quick and simple. All right. Um, so that's our background. I'm then also gonna make a new tile layer um, underneath tile main uh, called tiles lower. Um, and this one is going to be uh, tiles cave again. And we're just gonna place some of these like bottomless pits um, that I've got like set up over here. 
Um, and we're just going to sort of drag them across. And what these are going to be, it's going to be what you have to like use the hook shot to get across. Um, we can just make them like a bit, this one like a little bit bigger. Um, we can even, I don't know, we could introduce a little, little, little island or something like in the middle there, just to mix it up a little bit. Um, yeah, that looks all right, really. Um, and then. Um, once you've got all that in place, we're going to go to the coal layer. I'm going to turn that on. You can see this is still the coal layer from the uh, river. I'm going to turn the red brush, make it big, get rid of all this, and then I'm just going to kind of outline the rest of it. And I'm also, importantly, before I speed this up, I'm going to place the coal layer over the um, over these bottomless pits. And that's just how they're going to work, all right? We're just going to be really simple. We don't need them to be any more than this. I don't need to put something in the game that makes you fall down the pits or something like that, so I'm not going to. You know, we just we'll work smarter, not harder, right? <laughs> um, so we're just going to make them collidable, and then we'll put signposts either side, and then you'll be able to hookshot across them because you have no collision when you're hookshotting. Um, but uh, you won't be able to um, you won't be able to walk through them, okay? Um, and that's just going to be simply how we set it up. All right, uh, now I'm just going to do the rest of the room. Okay, simple as that. Um, and then I'm going to come to the instances layer. We're going to grab um, a O signposts. We don't. You can put some text on these if you think of anything interesting, or make a wholly new object that's just like a like post or whatever that doesn't like have an activate script or whatever, but also is hookable. You know, you can do it however you want. But I'm just using the tools I have because I don't want to waste video time being like, bring in another sprite and make a post and, and so on, right? You get the idea, okay? <laughs> um, so I'm just going to place some signposts around, um, leaving a bit of space so that you actually can like, you know, you, we don't want to get you stuck inside the wall or something like that, okay? We don't have to write code to account for every possibility, you know? You might think like, oh, how do we make it so that I can place a thing here and you don't get stuck in that? Well, just don't place a thing there, you know? Um, think about it. Um, <laughs> I'm not saying anyone would necessarily do or ask that, but it's an important point in general to think about, like, you know, how can I avoid writing more code? How can I avoid doing more stuff? Um, just, you know, use the level design to your advantage. Um, don't don't you don't write code for edge cases that you don't need you know um, if you can design around it do then I'm just gonna set up some new room exits we, we know how these work and you know I, I don't want to go through the whole finding the coordinates and setting them again so I'm just gonna do it real quick and we'll speed it up on the video all right okay uh, with that done we're then just gonna add the hat into here as well just on the instances layer just over here, wherever you want it to, to be, that we come and get our MacGuffin and bring it back to our dude. Um, and then that's that. So I'm just going to run the game now and just try out our new our new room. We already have the hookshot unlocked by default. So I'm just going to come into here, uh, get hit by that slime. I'm going to come into here, select the hookshot so it's there ready. Uh, we're going to come into here. And I'm just going to aim at the signpost, fire the hookshot. You can see it gets us. See, I can't walk across this gap, but I can just fire at the hook shot. There we go. We made a look. It's it's a it's a game mechanic. It's a puzzle. <laughs> get the hook shot. Fire at the signpost. There we go. Then we can get the hat, and we can bring the hat back. And we've essentially closed the game loop there, right? That's the, you know. I mean, we had it before, really, but now you have to go into a whole other room. Um, we'll see if we were to drop the hat and go in between the rooms, it would just go back to where it starts in the cave. We come through back to here now and hand this into him. You can see we're still obviously we still have that bug where you bring the hat and you kind of end up wearing it rather than carrying it once you've transitioned from a room. Um, I'm gonna do a whole bunch of little fixes for things like that that just weren't worth like a whole episode or whatever before. Um, next episode, I think. I think we're just gonna do a bunch of like cleanup. We're gonna make some of the shadows a bit better. Add um, rocks, make the, the the pots actually break when you throw them and that kind of thing. It's stuff like you. If you've been paying attention, you already know how to do all this, but it's just, you know, for completion's sake. <laughs> it's annoying because, like, it's stuff that you, you know how to do, but I just didn't want to consume time with in, in the episodes, right? Um, but we'll be doing a whole bunch of that. Um, again, this episode really hasn't taught you a whole lot, right? We've just sort of made a cave and, like, you can kind of do this um, in it. 
Um, but hopefully it was interesting to learn about how the tile set stuff worked if you didn't already, all right? Super simple, short and sweet, but it's, you know, we're getting towards the end of the game now and it's time to actually start cleaning things up and adding the things we want. Um, the other thing I want to do, actually, just before I round this out entirely, is on instances layer, we're actually going to put some of our bat enemy in here. This is where I kind of wanted them to be. Um, in, in the cave, right? They're bats. They live in a spooky cave, okay? Uh, put some bat enemies in there and then we can get rid of that test one we had in the village. Uh, then we get rid of this slime as well. I'm sure we've got rid of him before and I just keep adding him back in for whatever reason. And we're going to put some of the slimes into um, our river as well, okay? Because uh, this is where they want to be and that's where we're going to kind of farm them for money so that we can buy bombs uh, and then buy the hookshot and all that other good stuff. All right, thanks for watching. Sorry if this one, you know, there was literally no code. Like it was just sort of setting up some stuff and showing you how auto tiling worked. Um, uh, I hope that taught you something about auto tiling. Uh, sorry if it didn't. It's just, you know, we need to, we got to do the whole game, right? We got to get all this stuff out of the way. And I don't want to do too much stuff like, I don't, well, I don't want to do anything if I can avoid it off camera, okay? Um, so that's that, okay? Next episode, uh, we'll be doing some general cleanup. Um, we're also probably getting the, into what's making the boulder that's going to go in front of this cave. Okay, that's also really simple. Um, most of what we've got left to do in that regard is just using stuff we've already made um, that I've just sort of been putting off because I wanted to teach new things, new things, new things. Okay, so next episode will similarly be a bit of a, a, a clean up and, and doing stuff you may well have already done. All right, and then once we've done all that, um, it'll be on to making the, the shop so you can actually buy the items to you know uh, do all the different things in the game. Title screen, save and load, and a pause menu, and then we're around about done. Um, so we're getting towards the end there uh, now. So thank you for uh, the, everyone who's sat through this so far. Um, I hope you've been getting a lot out of it. Not long left to go now. We're on the final stretch. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time. Thank you to all my Patreon supporters, although I am going to have to change how this works soon. It is becoming, frankly, unsustainable. <laughs> thank you in particular, and in no particular order to Matthew Randall, Eric Godmer, Retro Gamer, Tanuki Dreams, Falkwood, Blenny Savant, Sal the Thief, Severus, Daniel Blatt, Miguelin, Zardrian, Elijah Kang, Timothy Hare, Jiminy Whippets, JD O'Dea, Josh Furban, Adrian.exe, Eric Santana, Darth Wolf, James Rumsey, Elizabeth and Landon Brown, Gage Hunter, Julian Cropley, Michael Kolich, John Kenai, Stephen Shenier, Philip Sheard, It's Matt Poor, Rachel Stewart, Arctics, Feral Princess, Jordan Hake, Odd Spiral, Phil Keen, Jason Welch, Andrew Gilbert, Vapaleon, Reva, Kesa Ho, Figgy, Cabbage Pants, Yoram Pater, Rene Dam, Rupinda, Dark Rider Zero. 0318, Jason ML, Relentless Rex, Bertie T, Daka Dondigo, Robert Churches, James Grimley, Seanathan, Bowser the Dog, Raildor, and Max M. Thank you ever so much, and thank you for watching. I'll catch you all next time.